Happy Valentine's Day, love Penelope and Danielle. Hi everyone, happy Valentine's Day. 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 Hey everyone, happy Valentine's Day. How many of you are giving Valentine's with messages like some of these to everyone? Let's take a look. Here's a fancy one that says, your tops. It's a Triceratops. There is a Hot Wheels one which says, you're the best Val, pal. And one more. Most of you will know who this is. You are amazing, Valentine. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you mean the words on every card you give to everyone in your class? Don't worry. I'm not going to make you feel guilty about not feeling like loving everyone. Although, Jesus does say that's important. Remember in our last unit, when our last unit of Sunday school, we had Decker the Crab as our Bible memory buddy. And he helped us remember that Jesus loves everyone. And we all replied with, thank you, Jesus. Let's try that all together. Jesus loves everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Great job. All right, today we are going to learn more about the difference between saying, I love you and truly loving someone. Love isn't just nice words, it's also actions. Love is mom or dad making your lunch every day. It's calling a friend who had a bad day just to talk to them. Or it's bringing your brother or sister or anyone else in your home their favorite things when they're sick in bed. Love is not just saying you love someone, but putting those words into action. Today, as we celebrate a day of love, let's think about how Jesus showed love and ask God how you can show love to your family, your friends, and every classmate you have. Let's make sure everyone sees our actions that Jesus loves them because Jesus loves everyone. Thank you, Jesus. And speaking of Jesus loving everyone, let's say our Bible memory verse, which we learned with Decker. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. And that verse was from the book of John, chapter 13, verse 34. How many of you get candy hearts for Valentine's? Their candy hearts are covered in words of love. Love is more than words, right? We need to put our love into action. And speaking of action, we are going to have a fun, action-packed game happening. We're going to have two contestants, and they are going to get a certain amount of time to lick some candy hearts and stick them on their face. What doesn't sound fun about that, right? Okay, let's get started. Let me introduce our two contestants. First, I want to introduce Judy. And next contestant is Mr. Stephen Twomley. Contestants, are you ready? Yes. On the count of three, Start licking. One, two, three, go. Oh, you're doing two at a oh. time. Oh yeah, that's a good point, actually. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Do you have any on your nose yet? No. <laughs> they keep falling. They kind of taste gross. I think they're delicious. <laughs> Maybe I should get some. You look cute, Steve. Oh, thanks. 
You look delightful. Oh, I almost stacked one on top of the other. That's Julia, cheating. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like you have a clear advantage here. Because I have less face space than you because of my beard. I feel like I have a nose piercing. <laughs> Steven's keep going on. Oh, they're pulling oh, out. <laughs> okay, um, how many do Time. I have? Steven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Judy. And probably ten that drop. Mine is dropping One, off. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Plus, plus the two that fell off. Plus two. That would be thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Good game. I guess I lost again. <laughs> Do we get to eat them now? You are more than welcome to eat them. Judy, oh. our reigning champ. Oh! Starburst and oh. chocolate. Thank you. Is this Steven just wow. awesome. Participation. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait for the next game. Same here. <laughs> See you at St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Where the green green will be green. Bring it on. <laughs> Thanks so much, Judy and Steven. You guys are awesome. That was pretty fun. Jesus never celebrated Valentine's Day in the Bible but he showed us what true love looked like over and over and over again. So today we're going to talk about a time when Jesus did something out of pure love for the men that he called to be his disciples. Now we're talking about the Passover feast, and Jesus got out from the table and he actually washed his disciples' feet. Now washing of the feet was a gross, dirty job. Servants did it, but it was necessary and important. The people in Bible times, they walked around everywhere in open sandals. And they didn't have cement on the road, so it was just dirt. And their feet were constantly filthy and smelly and dirty. But Jesus humbled himself to the place of a servant. And he washed the feet of his friends in order to show them what love looked like. See, love isn't just pretty words or a nice card or assorted candies in a box. It's washing feet. It's sacrificing your time, your money, and your hard work to help a friend, a neighbor, a family member, or someone special. It's putting other people first, making ourselves the least, just like Jesus did. Love is action, and the life of Jesus shows us over and over and over again how we can put love into action. So we're going to watch a short video of this story today, so take a look, and then we'll talk about it some more. Stories of the Bible. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. Wahoo! At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus and his disciples went to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus had 12 men who followed him through his ministry. They were called his disciples. Jesus and his disciples gathered for one final meal together. Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, and began to wash his disciples' feet. Jesus loved his disciples, and he knew the time was coming for him to leave them and return to heaven. When Jesus came to Peter, he said, Whoa, 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 wait! Are you going to wash my feet? Jesus said, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but someday you will. No! Peter said, you will never wash my feet. But Jesus then told him that unless he washed his feet, he would not belong to him. Oh, well then, okay! Then Peter said, then wash my hands and head as well, not just my feet. But Jesus told him that was not necessary. He just needed to wash his feet for Peter to become clean. So Jesus finished washing their feet and said that the disciples should do to others as he had done for them. He told them to follow the example that he had set for them to serve each other and not think of themselves as greater than any other. 
then God would bless them for doing as Jesus had taught them to do. Jesus' act of love is even more remarkable when we know what Jesus knew at that very moment. Within a few hours, Judas would betray him and hand him over to his enemies to be put on trial. Nine of those disciples whose feet he washed would abandon him in that moment and go into hiding. And only two would follow him into town, watching from far away as he was accused of crimes he did not commit. One of those two men was Peter, the man who wanted to wash Jesus' feet. That same night, Peter had declared that he would follow Jesus anywhere, even if it meant death. Jesus knew that Peter would run away. He knew that Peter would deny him three times. And he even told Peter that. Peter swore it would never happen. He would never do that to Jesus. But someone recognized Peter in the courtyard, and he caved. He denied Jesus three times, and then he ran away. Jesus knew all of this when he was washing their feet. And he still did. He still washed their feet. He had come to earth to give his life for them so that he could save them from their sins. He knew none of them and none of us were perfect. And Jesus loves all of us despite our sin and our faithlessness. And if we love him enough to give him our hearts, he'll bless us with eternal life as well. Jesus wants us to love others as he did. He wants us to put other people first in our family, our friends, and even our enemies. He wants us to Always be on the lookout for opportunities to serve others and put others first. Any time that we humble ourselves to serve out of love, we bear witness to the love of Jesus. And Jesus can use our love and our sacrifice to show other people how much he loves them. Valentine's Day is a great opportunity to show love to someone. It's not just the mushy kind of love. This week, be on the lookout. Find opportunities to show love to someone. Look for a classmate in need. Look for a chance to help your mom. Do something good and unexpected for your brother or sister. Let's love like Jesus with actions and not just words. So that through our service, we can share the love of Jesus. I'm just going to pray for us. God, I thank you so much for this time together. I thank you that you love us so much. I thank you that Jesus came to earth to show us this love. I pray, God, that we would have an awesome week this week loving others. That you would help us to show love with action. I pray, God, that you would keep all of us safe and that you'd bring all my friends back next week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids, thanks for joining us today. That was a lot of fun, I have to say. Miss Judy and Stephen, my favorite part. But y'all need to remember that Jesus loves everyone. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to end with a fun game. It's a true or false game. A question will pop up, and you just need to shout out true or false, and then the answer will come on, and we will end with that. Have a great day.